I believe Everbee is one of the most powerful Etsy research tools out there, but so many people are not using it to its full potential. In fact, I even wasn't using it to its full potential until not too long ago when I decided to just click on every single button that I could find. And there is so many new tools and ways to use this that I've been implementing in my store. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks of how to use Everbee in your store from the more basic ones to the advanced ones that took me actually years of using Everbee to start fully utilizing. And PS, I'm currently on a really, really hot island. So I will be getting progressively sweatier as this video goes on. So just ignore that. So the more obvious way people use Everbee is for tag research. So what you're gonna put in your titles, what you're gonna put in your tags. And the first way that you can do some research is using actually the Etsy search bar. So you can type in the beginning of the phrase of the product you wanna sell. So say I am selling a mama something, maybe a shirt or a sweatshirt. I can just type in mama and Etsy already is going to give me some of the most searched phrases that start with mama. And then Everbee actually auto populates the search volume of these. So you're not just guessing because if there's one with maybe 10 searches a month, maybe you actually don't want to include that. It's not as helpful, but ones like this has 2,545 searches. So you might want to type out your product with this keyword, mama embroidered sweatshirt, if that is relevant to your design. If it's not embroidered, don't do it. It actually needs to be relevant to your design. And then you can use these and use some of these other ones, again, if relevant, because these are the most popular searches. And you can see the search volume here that usually follow the keyword mama. The next way I use Everbee on the daily is to do competitor research to understand what keywords other people are using to rank on page one that they're putting in their titles in their tags. So if I was creating a mama embroidered sweatshirt and I'm unsure of maybe the other ways people might search for this on Etsy, I'm just going to type that in and then I'm gonna go look at people who are selling a similar sweatshirt to me that are ranking on page one. Usually I'm avoiding ads because they pay to be there, but maybe one like this, for example, using the keyword tool, and sorry, my page actually isn't fully loading right now. The Wi-Fi is not great, island problems, but Everbee did load and scrolling down over here, I can see all of the tags that they used along with the volume and competition. So I can come in here and start using similar tags in my listing because again, I can see that these are actually getting searches. They're relevant to my design. Don't grab ones that aren't relevant to your design, but use the ones that yes, if someone searched this up and you showed up first, they'd be like, yes, this is exactly what I was looking for. And I'm just gonna grab some of those ones and then I'm gonna copy and paste them into my tags. And I'm gonna do this with a few different listings. I'm not just gonna take one person's tags. I don't wanna compete directly with them and probably not all of their tags are completely relevant to my design since we don't have the same design. But again, just going through some of the results on page one and finding other keywords that maybe someone might type into the Etsy search bar. And again, these are helping these people rank on page one so they can help you as well. The next tool that I swear by that I think a lot of people don't use, I used to always do this in a Google doc, but I find now this calculator so much more helpful. This is our Etsy calculator where you can calculate your profit and increase it to get the profit that you want. And the reason I love it is it because it includes all of the Etsy fees, the revenue, the cost of goods. So you're able to see exactly what you're spending and exactly what your profit would be for your product. So I use this when pricing my products. I'll go into Printify. I will pull out the cost of item. I'll pull out the cost of shipping. I will test my different sales prices. I often run a 25% discount. So I'm going to factor that in as well. I charge six USD shipping. And then after plugging all this in, you can actually find your profit and increase it until you're happy. The next key way that people who have ever be should be using this is to do competitor research. I am massive on doing competitor research to understand what's doing well right now. And I'm also going to show you how you can use Everbee to find trends. And this one is the one that's a little bit more hidden that I have been using so much lately. It's probably the number one way I am now using Everbee, which I didn't for the last two years. The next way that I use Everbee is to understand my competitors 
who is selling the most with my keyword right now and understanding what is selling is so important. I spend so much time doing competitor research and Everbee is the main tool that I use to make that go as quickly as possible. So on Everbee, when you type out your product, so I put in mama embroidered sweatshirt on Everbee at the side here, you're gonna go to product analytics and the first mistake you might make, and I always do this, is to start using the data here, but this is actually just gonna show you what's on page one. And that might not show you who's making the most sales because everyone's page one is slightly different based on your past search history, based on where you're located, based on a bunch of factors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the side button here and go to all of the ever be database going through 130 million listings. And then often it's going to bring in your keyword here. Sometimes it might not, so you have to retype it. But now I'm searching all of Etsy for all the listings that are using this keyword here so I can find the ones that are making the most sales and then I can sort by monthly sales. So now I can see that this person is making a thousand sales with this keyword. It's great to see when someone is actually making sales with the keyword that you want to use on the product that you want to use. It means there's buyers searching for that. This person has had this listing live for 12 months. They've got an advantage, an upside to me. So maybe I want to find trends. I want to find new listings with this keyword that are making sales because if a new person is making sales with this keyword, that means I can too. And I can find the trends that are doing well this month. And the best way to use this is by starting to use filters. So I'm going to turn on the filters and under listing age, I'm going to find listings using this keyword that maybe were created in the last three months. And now I'm going to make sure that these are still sorted by monthly sales. You might have to do this again, but now I'm starting to see the ones using this keyword that were recently created that are still making a killing on Etsy so that I know it's still possible as someone brand new. Some of these are making sales and they were created one month ago. So I can start going through these and see what is doing well right now. And actually I can see here the word Mimi, not mama, Mimi is one of the best selling kind of phrases with this keyword right now that is recently created as a listing. So maybe you start making some Mimi sweatshirts. Using this filter tool in all of my research has been game changing for the way that I do research using Everbee. And it's something I did not play around with much until recently. And finding these trends has been what seriously helps me create so many new bestsellers. Because before I was trying to compete with people who had listings up for 30 months. They already have so much upside. They have so much history behind their listing. It's going to be hard for you to get better than them versus you find the listings that are doing recently well. You're going to find trends, words, new keywords that you can use that are similar that other people are using to create bestsellers this month. The next thing I want to show you is how to use Everbee and actually this product analytics tool to find some brand new niche ideas that you can try in your store. So you might have already seen at the side here, keyword research. I actually don't find this keyword research tool useful. It gives you misspellings, plurals, different kind of just arrangements of the words that you put in and they're just not things that I would actually use. So when I'm doing tag research, I'm actually just doing what I showed you earlier and just searching that up on Etsy and using the Everbee stats. But to find brand new, maybe niches that I want to try in my store, what I'm gonna do is in the product analytics here, again, with the Everbee database selected, moving from the product analytics tags, I'm gonna move to the tag analytics. And now I'm gonna get a bunch of keywords here that have a good volume to competition ratio. But there are some really weird ones, kind of like Strendy Bow. So I actually want to do a filter. I don't really want to do whatever this thing is. I'm gonna add a filter and I want to find things that have a minimum 200 searches a month and then maybe max competition, maybe max 5,000 competition. And now I have keywords here like college block mama, a Grammy sweatshirt, Grammy shirt, side bow sweatshirt, diet Coke sweatshirt, not things like Chappelle Roan that is a public figure, don't use celebrities, soda sweatshirt, diet Coke shirt, 
not Mystic Falls. Or you can do this with that keyword that you had started with, or you can change up the keyword up here so you can remove the keyword. Maybe you wanna just look up things for shirt and then do the exact same thing. And then this is just giving you kind of relevant keywords. It's not exactly perfect, but it's great for some ideas for niches. And again, don't forget to use the filter over here, max oops, minimum 200. You can change up these numbers as well. And there you go. We have things like Pennsylvania football. I've seen that doing really well right now. Huff print embossed, embossed sweatshirt, dog portrait hoodie. And you can kind of just keep playing with the different keywords in here to find ideas. It's not the perfect niche research, but it does help kind of just brainstorm some new things to try. And the last way that I like to use this is to do shop analytics using the non-shop analytics tool. I'm going to show you what I mean. If I want to do research and I want to find stores that are brand new that are doing really well, you will see that at the side here, there is a new shop analyzer, but using it while it is great to find brand new Etsy stores that are doing well, it's going to give you a bunch that aren't selling the same product as you. So it's not exactly the most helpful. You can go through all of them and try to find ones that are selling the same thing as you. Or what you can do instead is coming back to the Everbee database. Again, sticking within product analytics, you can search up your product. You can also add a filter and then turn on clothing. If you sell just clothing, again, you can add a filter by putting in a keyword here and then adding a filter for shop age. So I want to find ones that are created in the last six months and they sell clothing because that is what I sell. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to sort this by monthly sales. And now I'm going to find stores or listings, but using the listings, I can link back to the stores that were created in the last six months selling the exact same thing as me. And I can go see why, what are they doing differently that I'm not doing that help them become a bestseller. And I'm actually fitting in this new bonus tip because this actually came out as a new tool after I filmed this video in between release. So just amending it here. So now when you open up the Everbe extension on a product page and you scroll down, you're going to see this new spot called trends and you're able to actually change the time frame here and you can actually see how many sales a certain listing has gotten over time and by playing with the different time horizons you're able to see if this type of design style or listing is doing well currently so this can help you find trends or it'll help you understand if perhaps a trend is over and not worth you doing now thank you guys so much for watching if you learned something new about everbee let me know in the comments below if there's a brand new way that i missed that you use everbee let me know or let me know what your favorite research tool is and if this helped at all if you could please drop a like and subscribe. That would help me so much. Thank you guys. And I will see you next week.